Athena and welcome to my new video. This video is all about me finally finishing my sketchbook that I started two years ago at this point. So I bought this sketchbook in 2021 and uh, it's a moleskin sketchbook and I was really excited about filling it up but you know getting it actually filled was nowhere like as my goal. I did not think I would be getting this done in years to come but last year I started to really get excited about filling this up and it was my goal to fill it up uh, last year which obviously didn't happen since we're <laughs> here right now but now I've been speed running through this sketchbook for the last couple of weeks and I only have about 14 pages left and in this video I will be doing 10 of those pages so I have 14 pages like I said the last page is kind of or the last spread is one of those pages where you have that kind of awkward glue in between and it doesn't really open fully and I will be skipping that I don't care about filling those up and the last spread before that is going to be in another video where I will be doing the final spread in the sketchbook and also like I will talk more about the sketchbook in detail and the process so I will have 10 pages to finish in this video and it is right now Monday but let me see what date it is it is 27th of March and I have decided that I want to finish this sketchbook this month which means that I only have five days and with the pace that I've been doing lately I think I will absolutely be able to do that but it will definitely take <laughs> some um, motivation so I really hope I can feel motivated throughout this week to work on this again we will be making 10 pages in this video I really hope you are looking forward to that it's probably gonna be really long and I won't be focusing on too much on the process I'll just show some snippets and talk to you about the um, thoughts behind them I guess but yeah let's let's get into that <laughs> It is voiceover Dina and I'm here starting with my first painting. So I had a couple of ideas that I wanted to do in these last pages in my sketchbook. Some things that I had wanted to paint but I just hadn't done before. And one of them was the Hobbit house or the back end in Lord of the Rings or Hobbit. I am really bad because I've never watched those movies but I know like this house and I know so many people also recognize it from those movies but yeah I have never seen it so I usually don't like to paint things like from movies or TV shows I've never seen before but this was um, as a reference photo on Unsplash and I decided to go for it. I think it was the movie set in I think it's is it like in New Zealand or something so yeah I used a reference photo photo and painted it. Oh, by the way, I have all of my reference photos in the description. But yeah, uh, that was one of my ideas and I decided to tackle it on the first day because I knew that it was going to take ages to paint and I just wouldn't have the same energy in, uh, you know, later during the week. I just thought that making it on the first day would be the best idea because yeah, I just couldn't have the energy on later days. Some other painting ideas that I had, you know, in my mind for this week were greenhouses or some sort of botanical gardens. And I also wanted to paint some sort of food spread, especially like a ramen bowl. I've seen people painting those in their sketchbooks. They seem like such a fun little thing to paint. So I decided that I want to do those things in the last days and I did all of my plans, I completed all of my ideas and that was actually a good thing that I had something in my mind because uh, on those days that I wasn't painting something that I had planned beforehand, I noticed that I was definitely struggling a lot more. <laughs> So as you can see, I am trying to really speed up the footage. I think I sped it up like 5000% uh, or something. So. It's super fast, but this is not meant to be like a uh, tutorial or anything, so I was totally fine with that. 
Painting the house itself was really challenging. I always struggle with perspective in like architecture and when I'm painting houses and buildings and things like that. So I definitely didn't get that correctly or perfectly right, but I was also totally fine with that. I also did do a really good sketch beforehand as well, because that was definitely necessary in order to make this look good, because this is a really complicated painting, and especially since the house in this picture is kind of like... I mean, not slanted, but the part of the house that is farther away, of course, has to look a little bit smaller. And, you know, the um, roof of the house has to be kind of slanted for this perspective to work. So that was definitely a hard part of the painting process, but I think I got there in the end anyway. It's definitely not perfect, but usually when I'm doing paintings that take a long time or like anyway do a painting, I don't usually obsess over details and make sure everything looks perfect. I'm fine with things looking like I've hand painted them, you know? <laughs> I painted the house first and then I started painting the greenery around it and there is definitely a lot of it. So I first focused on the grass that is, you know, above the house and then I focused on the lower portions of the painting and even though it took a long time and it was, you know, pretty, uh, you know, it was time consuming and I had to be really detailed with this, it was still a really nice process to, you know, see this painting coming to life. And especially at this point when I don't know how much time I had painted at this point, but this whole painting took me like eight hours plus um, my sketching part. So it definitely was a super time consuming process, but I'm really, really proud of how it turned out. I loved making the different flowers in the um, in the bottom of the painting. It was so much fun. and. During this process, I definitely got these fun little flashbacks to the beginning of my whole painting journey and even just like a few years ago when I was painting something similar, you know, I was making these bushes and I was painting grass and flowers and greenery. You know, I feel so much more confident now that I can create beautiful things and that always makes me super happy. Even though often when I'm painting, I just kind of at some point like absolutely hate what I'm doing and I'm not sure if it will turn out good. You know, it's a different kind of confidence anyway. And I am like, I usually still know that when I paint, for example, like greenery, I know that I have the ability to do it and make it look beautiful. So that was a fun little reminder throughout this process, even though it took ages to paint. But that is it for this painting. I really, really love how it turned out. And next we will go to my next spread, which I wanted to paint some food in. So like I said, I wanted to paint a ramen bowl, but I also found this really cute picture on Unsplash that had like a little bread. And I had never painted bread before, I don't think. And this kind of like um, layout and this kind of composition really intrigued me because I've painted something like this before, but with like pies and I just wanted to do it again. But I have to say, I didn't like this painting process. I don't think the end result is bad, but I just didn't really enjoy painting this. Maybe it's just the fact that in the end, now that I look at the painting, there isn't that much going on. Like the background is this like gray background and then there's this like gray little metal thing <laughs> that I'm painting. And um, then, you know, we have some like little pieces of cloth on top and then we have the bread. But, you know, there isn't that much going on. And I definitely like struggled a lot with big areas of this painting. For example, the 
uh, cloth that is underneath the bread because it was so hard to blend colors in that and you know add those little shadows to it and little folds so it was definitely a painting that i think i dislike the most out of all of the paintings that i made in this video but at the same time when i got some distance to it like now i do not like hate it at all but i remember when i first finished it i was like i do not like this i don't want to see this ever again but i think in the end now that i look at this painting it does look like bread but i definitely had to you know dip my brush in some color and add it to the paper and just kind of like blend it with my finger a little bit so it would look more organic and the texture in the bread would look realistic that's always something that i struggle with quash like making some sort of texture or grit to things you know in a natural way but i think i managed to do it in the end anyway it's definitely not perfect but i don't need to make anything perfect or i could not really do that anyway But next we're going to be making a page that I was really excited about painting and I actually think it turned out really nice but it definitely took me longer than I thought. So I'm painting this ramen bowl on the page next to the one that we just did. And again, I have an unsplash reference photo. I know that I feel like I've been always like in my previous videos, I've been saying that I've been using reference photos a lot and um, it has definitely been like my comfort zone lately it has been really hard for me to come up with absolutely like anything without a reference photo like i'm really really struggling with my creativity in that way like i'm creating a lot i'm painting a lot i am really inspired to paint but i feel like i always need some sort of guidance to start my painting and i feel like there's probably many people who feel the same but it just like feels really weird because i know that i have the capability of coming up with interesting subjects and interesting compositions and things like that but lately it has felt like i have no such feature <laughs> in my brain and i just cannot do it so yeah i was looking at a reference photo and i mainly used it for the of the elements in the ramen bowl except like the noodles itself i definitely like don't look at things too clearly like i just want to make sure that i have the elements right in a way like you know the colors right and the shadows and highlights are where they need to be but i don't really look at it like too strictly But I have to say, I definitely got really hungry when I was painting this. And I think I've been eating uh, like noodles twice because of this painting now. Because I, once I looked at it after I had done this and I was like, oh, I'm so hungry now. <laughs> So yeah, um, it was also really fun to just like paint those little pieces of corn. It was so nice to just focus on those like little areas. And even though like I don't think this looks like super realistic or anything, it was just so much fun. And later on, I'm also adding some like little chili flakes and I don't know, pepper on top of the eggs. And that was also like such a satisfying little step to add to this painting. So I really enjoyed that. And yeah, it was kind of fun that this painting had multiple different little elements and paintings in it. So, you know, all of the elements and the toppings on top of the ramen bowl were kind of, you know, a separate painting in and of itself. And then, like, I tried to think of it as that more than, like, just as a full painting because it was so much more, like, satisfying because I, you know, finished one element at a time and then I moved to the other one. 
but yeah i would say that i want to paint more food is definitely one of the things that i really like doing i don't know like what it is about it but i also remember that i was painting food a lot with my pantone challenge but i've never really done it after that i don't know it just feels more natural and um it's definitely more in my comfort zone to paint more landscapes and nature but i definitely love to also paint food and close-ups of fruits and things like that so i want to paint those more as well I hope the pace that we are going with, just like going from one page to the next, isn't like too much for you. I know that this whole video is kind of like super fast, super quick, like just making these breads and finishing a painting and then doing another. But that's really what this week <laughs> was all about. And I kind of, in a way, really enjoyed that. And here we are making my absolute favorite painting in this whole challenge, this whole week. I painted this like little mountain meadow with some flowers and trees and a really beautiful sunset sky i have to say that the sky itself is like one of my favorite like areas in this whole painting i struggle with gradients so much like it is actually like my hardest painting subject that i could ever do like gradients are like pain in the ass for me but just being able to paint that and be like really happy with what you just created is so nice and I think the gradient from that blue to yellow actually looks super smooth and I love how it turned out and also like those little um, orangey and yellow bits in the ground on the field and then the white flowers on top like yes this is so satisfying to me. I love these kinds of paintings where it's so like effortlessly beautiful and doesn't take too much time. I actually ended up only spending like one hour on this which was super nice and fast and yes I, I just love this process. I actually started to watch a movie when I started making this painting. I actually am doing this on the same day that I did the last spread because I was just feeling like watching a movie and painting a little bit more and I knew that this spread wouldn't take that much time and I think that was a great idea. So I think I watched like yeah which ready or not i've heard a lot of good things about it honestly like i don't think that movie was like anything special to me but <laughs> anyway i watched it while i was painting this whole spread and it turned out really good and i was also like really confident about you know nailing that gradient so i wanted to do some sort of gradients on the next spread as well and i did that with the sky and the mountain and it turned out really good here as well so this whole page here is super simple like this is the simplest painting i've probably done in a long while in the sketchbook it took me only four to five minutes and i pretty much just painted that mountain and that sky and a couple of little trees here in the back and then i painted the ground with these yellow flowers I think, again, really effortlessly beautiful, didn't take that much time, really enjoyable process without having to, you know, focus way too much on small details and kind of like getting bored of the painting itself. Yes, I would 100% recommend. <laughs>
Next, we're working on a painting that was really hard to, you know, find inspiration for because I didn't know what I wanted to do with this spread. I found this picture with a sunset sky and some like ocean waves and I decided that I would go for that, but it was definitely a struggle. So as you can see, I made an absolutely horrendous gradient in the back. That was one of my worst gradients that I've done in a while. <laughs> and I just struggled with it so much. Like, ugh, it was so hard. But I love this guy so much. I think the clouds that I added on top were one of my best clouds ever. And I love them so much. Like those super fun, fluffy, perfectly shaped, soft clouds that I added on top with that blue so good i love them so much and i wish i could say the same thing about this whole painting but i don't really like the water and the you know shapes in that um it was definitely a hard process doing the water because i immediately noticed that the base color or the background color i added for that was a little bit too light in color and then when i started adding those shapes and those little lines on top it just didn't really ever come together like i wanted and i also like loved this guy so much and i just wasn't really feeling like working too much on the like the water part i kind of just left it almost like unfinished because i didn't really care about working on it for too long you know but i think it turned out fine in the end i just wish i would have done a better job with the water since i love this guy so much but it's totally fine I originally had a little clip here where I was talking about my thoughts on my final day of this challenge and like what I wanted to paint but I felt like this video was already so long so I decided to just cut it out and I will explain it to you here in the voiceover. So uh, now that I'm painting the last spread it is Thursday which means that I was one day early and that's kind of what I hoped would happen because I still had to paint that one last spread after this and I kind of wanted to film the intro for that in the morning and yeah it ended up working out perfectly and I got this spread done on Thursday so again I had that um, painting idea in mind where I wanted to paint some uh, botanical gardens and greenhouses and I decided that I would do it on the last day so I had this one reference photo saved that I really loved, but I knew that it was going to take a little while to do. Um, this painting, I will have it linked below as all of my reference photos that I used for all of these paintings, but it had this kind of out of focus area kind of behind these little window frames or this kind of grid. I don't know how to call it like a wooden frame for the greenhouse and you know there was a lot of greenery behind it and I just started to make this kind of grayish greenish blue background for the whole painting and then I painted the frames on top but this painting took the longest time to actually get there in the end and looking pretty I was really scared that I had ruined this painting for the longest time 
and that has been one of my biggest issues when I've been working in the sketchbook. Even though I am really confident in myself that I can paint, I still for some reason like I don't have any trust in me when I'm in the ugly phase of my painting because I always go through that. My paintings always look really rough at points because I often do like these bigger areas first and then I start, you know, um, only after my like base layers are done, I start actually adding in the details and making it prettier. But since it's taking so long and at one point my painting looks really bad, I don't really trust in myself. You know, I don't trust that I can actually bring the painting to life. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is that one painting that I will never want to see in the sketchbook. But every single time I prove myself wrong. So I do not understand why I still always feel that way. <laughs> But yeah, this is definitely a painting that turned out really pretty. By the way, look at how chunky my sketchbook is. <laughs> it was actually really hard to paint on those um, two page paintings where I really had to like lift my sketchbook up to see like that I wasn't going to do a really crooked line across the middle section. It was really hard. So yeah. <laughs> But as you can see, I just made those little frames and then I was adding some color for those little blobs of greenery on top. And at this point, it was still kind of looking rough. It has kind of Studio Ghibli or Studio Ghibli um, type of feel to this painting at this point. I don't know why. I feel like there's this one like screen capture that people always paint. I don't know if it's like Kiki's Delivery Service. I've never really watched their movies, but yeah, this definitely reminds me of that. And then I started painting some flowers on top and after that and when I started like adding those little shadows to the frames itself, then this painting started coming to life. And actually like after I was like already done filming, I decided to go and add some like white, like super light highlights to some of the greenery to make them pop more so it would look more like sunlight. And yeah, I actually think that this turned out so pretty. Definitely one of my favorite paintings in this whole sketchbook, even though I feel like I went through like half of the process not trusting in myself. <laughs> But the last painting in this whole video, I feel like I've been here forever, but at the same time it has gone by so fast because I've been painting so much in this video. But I decided to paint another little greenhouse painting. This painting subject is definitely something that I've seen so many people do and I've also painted something similar in the past too. So I've seen these paintings from so many people where there's like a window in the middle of painting and then in the sides you have a lot of different kinds of greenery and yeah like I said I've also painted that before but I was definitely struggling with like what to paint for this last page because I wanted it to be in some way similar as the one that I just did but not like completely the same so I thought that I would kind of make the same kind of greenhouse vibes but maybe just a different sort of feel to it for example the other painting is like super sunny and you can see and you can feel the sunlight but in this one there's definitely a more moody vibe and I was trying to make sure that the windows kind of look a little bit wet and maybe a little bit even like dirty <laughs> by adding this gray on to the glass and it was definitely a lot of fun trying to get that feel to the painting. And I would say that the rest of the painting was super fast after that. I was just making all types of greenery around the window. In the top, I was making some sort of hanging plants. And on the bottom, I made some grassy and uh, bushy type of greenery. And then I also added a couple of flowers. I actually didn't really like the flowers in the end. I thought that it looked perfect without them. 
so the little orangey and yellow flowers that I added on the right side I actually ended up covering but the daisies stayed there because they were not easy to cover so I think it turned out fine definitely could have done without the flowers but you know sometimes you make these mistakes and you cannot really erase them <laughs> you just have to live with them and you know be okay with it So that is it for the last painting. It was super simple and fun and I really enjoyed working on it. But uh, now that we are soon coming to the end, here in the end, uh, not voiceover Dina, <laughs> will give you their last thoughts about this whole challenge and the sketchbook. So see you there. So we're now getting to the end of this video. I just yesterday finished the page 100 and i have to say that i love the spread and i'm super happy that i got it done and i really like how it turned out i am not happy about having to do the one last spread i mean i could of course just skip it i actually thought about yesterday i was like so tired about painting i was like can i just skip the whole last spread like is it is that just fine but then i was like yeah it's fine but at the same time i i'm going to feel so much better about actually getting the whole sketchbook done and not skipping that last page even though i would kind of want to do it but i thought that i am going to find something pretty simple and fun to paint on the last spread and it will be all all right <laughs> but yeah um i really enjoyed um setting up these pages in this sketchbook this week i had so much fun coming up with the ideas and um just painting away and seeing the sketchbook finally like filling up to the last pages and that makes me so happy that i finally am getting this done i'm starting to film the last spread now and like I said, it will be in a separate video. I'm not sure if it will, if that will come like um, immediately after this video, like not immediately, but like maybe next week or something like that. But anyway, I will have that in a separate video and I will talk about this process more and, um, you know, talking about my sketchbook and things like that. So yeah, um, I'm going to be publishing that video soon. So look forward to that. Also look forward to my sketchbook tour. And here's also a reminder, if you haven't um, done it yet and you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. It will really help me a lot if you do. And also leave a thumbs up and while we are here, if you watched to the end of this video, please tell me which of these pages is your favorite. It always helps me a lot when you give me your um, thoughts about my painting, so I know that uh, I could turn some of them into prints later if people really like them. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for coming here to watch this chill video, and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!